Welcome to the video where I build the Vortex 5.4 wood gas stove. The first thing I do is cut the top off of a 26 ounce bean can with a set of side cutting can openers. Uh, the 26 ounce can which is also 793 grams. This will be our outer can. We'll want to keep the top. Uh, the next thing we do is find a 14 ounce flip top can which is also 397 grams. After we've emptied the cans we'll want to take off the labels and remove any glue that's the modifications that we need to do to the outer can are we need to add six fresh air inlets which are three quarters of an inch from the bottom and three eighths of an inch in diameter. These will be equally spaced around three quarters of the can. Here you can see that I'm marking uh, three quarters of an inch over on this paper and then another three quarters of an inch and cutting the paper off. Uh, then I will tape the paper around the bottom of the can. Here I'm taping the paper around the can uh, and making sure it's nice and tight. Next I will take a razor knife and I'll cut along the edge of the paper um, and I'll cut deep enough to make sure I cut through both pieces of paper. What I have left is a piece of paper that's the exact circumference of the can. Now I will join the two edges of the paper and fold the paper uh, and then tape the paper together to keep it in a ring. After I do this I will mark the two folded edges with a sharpie. Uh, this will give me two out of the eight marks that I need to make. I will only be using six out of the eight marks you'll see in just a minute. The next thing that I'll do is I will fold the paper so the two marks that I made uh, are perfectly in line and then I will mark the edges of those folds with a sharpie. This will give me four out of the eight marks that I will need. The next thing I will do is I will fold another two marks together and fold the paper in half. Once I mark these, I'll have six out of the eight marks that I need. And then I'll continue on and do the last fold and mark it to give me the eight marks that I need. Once I'm done marking, I can separate the page by taking the tape off. And you can see I have eight perfect marks. Uh, then I'm going to retape this paper onto the can as a template. And now you can see that I have my template made. Uh, I'll find the crease in the can and I'm going to mark off two of the eight. Uh, and that is going to be the wind deflector so the wind can't blow in and cause the flame to act. Now we'll begin prepping the in inner can. And the first thing we'll do is we will mark off the 16 secondary air inlets. Uh, they are three eighths of an inch from the top of the second inner can and three sixteenths of an inch in diameter. So here I am marking up three eighths of an inch and then another three eighths of an inch and cutting the piece of paper off. Uh, and again like I did last time I am taping the paper to the can then cutting it off and removing the extra. Now I will join the paper and I will start folding and marking the edges of the paper. The accuracy of this is very important. I proved in some of the other videos that I have of this that only a little small error will actually give you up to 50 degree Fahrenheit difference in burn temperature. Uh, and as you can see I now have 16 equally marked um, spots on my template and I'm taping it back onto the can. After the secondary air template is in place we'll start working on the primary air holes. We'll need to make 16 primary air holes a half inch up from the bottom of the can uh, and a quarter inch in diameter and then another 25 quarter inch hole on the bottom of the second can. Uh, I will not bore you with uh, making the template as you've seen just a few minutes ago how to make the template uh, but here I have both templates on the sides of the can. Now I'm going to measure and make the template for the bottom. Uh, so here I'm just tracing around the bottom of the can and finding the center of the can uh, using measurements. 
Once I've measured and found the center of the can, I'm going to use a compass to verify that the center is there. Uh, then I'm going to do a little bit of math and I'm going to put a mark one third of the way across the can. Then I'm going to measure to a high spot on the can uh, and do another circle at the high spot of the can. Uh, so here you can see that I've got two circles. My uh, inner circle will end up with eight holes and my outer circle will end up with 16 holes. Uh, and here I'm just dividing it up using my ruler. These holes are not quite as critical, uh, but when you're measuring and making a template for them, it looks very nice and finished when you're done because all the holes are equally spaced. Once I've marked off and double checked, I use my Sharpie to darken up the holes. Uh, and as you can see, I have 25 holes marked out of my template. Now I will just cut the template out with my scissors and attach it to the top of the can. Make sure you tape the template about four places on the bottom so it doesn't move. Uh, next we'll start on the outer can using a 16th inch drill bit and we will carefully line our drill up and drill our holes, our starter holes, through the can. Uh, do not push too hard on the can because you can dent the can. Uh, once I'm done uh, putting the holes in, I can slide the template up and continue uh, using an 8th inch drill bit. I like to start out with a couple starter holes um, so I don't have a chance to dent or, or hurt the can. Uh, next I'll use a step drill and drill the holes out to 3 eighths of an inch. Again, try not to push too hard because you'll dent the outside of the can and the appearance of your stove will uh, be messy. As you probably noticed, I marked the edge of the step drill uh, to the precise size with a Sharpie marker. It makes it much easier to drill the correct size hole. Uh, and here you can see that I started out with a 16th drill and drilled the holes and moved to an 8th inch drill and drilled the holes. Uh, and I do this throughout the entire can. Next I'll mark the 3 16th diameter and the quarter inch diameter on my step drill. Uh, and then I will drill the holes on the secondary airports and primary airports. Once I'm done with that, I will deburr all of the holes using a file or a scraper. Uh, and once I'm done deburring, I will rerun the drills back through the holes carefully to remove any burrs that I pushed in with my files, but not so deep that I actually drill the holes oversize. Uh, as you can see, these holes are done and uh, they look very good. They fit together nicely. Uh, the final step here in the building of this will be to put the inner can on the cover of the outer can and draw a line around the outside. Uh, then we will drill a hole through the center of that can top uh, to start with our tin snips. Once the hole is drilled all the way through, we can start cutting with our tin snip. Now you'll want to cut just inside the mark with your tin snips, uh, staying away about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. Uh, once you've got the hole cut out, you can try it on the can. It should fit snugly around the inner can. Once you've got that cut out, um, you are almost done. You could stop right now and your wood gas stove would burn just fine, but we're going to add what I call the vortex tweak. Uh, you'll need to either use a drill bit or something that will snugly go inside the secondary air ports and you will basically put it in and give it a twist to the side making sure that you're twisting the same direction for all of the holes. When you're done you'll have an angled hole going into the burn chamber of your wood gas stove. This will cause the flames to actually spin and twist around in a circle. You'll want to stick your drill bit or screwdriver in and twist and continue around several times and until all the holes are very similar and all pointing the same direction. At this point your stove is complete and you can bring it outside and use it as is. The first time that you burn it it will actually have some uh, some of the coating will have to burn out. I decided that I wanted to make this stove a finished stove, so I took some high temperature paint 
and I spray painted it. Uh, then I lit a small fire in it uh, to cure the paint. Uh, in this view you can actually see the vortex starting. I used very little fuel in this so um, it wouldn't get too hot. Uh, but obviously the vortex is spinning um, and it's really a nice looking burn. This wood gas stove burning wood pellets will achieve a 1500 degree Fahrenheit temperature and boil water in a little less than six minutes. Uh, I've boiled water in just over six minutes in zero degree Fahrenheit air temperature. Thank you for joining me while I built my Vortex 5.4 wood gas stove. Goodbye.